is your heart and celebrate it.
that phrase, that, that little verse there, friends don't treat me like they used to. Since I laid my verse down, see, once you come over to the Lord's side, your friends don't have a whole lot to do with you, because they can't get into your head, and I don't let them in mind. So I just make, I say, they ask me, sometimes people ask me, what you think about that? I say, I haven't thought about it. And that's the only answer I give them. I don't think about it. So that what's on your mind is not on mine. So I just try to keep my mind focused on God and doing what's right, living a good life. Not that I have not made mistakes. I've made mistakes a lot of ways down the line. But I ask God forgiveness. And that's the only one I have to ask forgiveness from is him. We are still, Dickens going to come forth now and do the collection. And while they do that, we're going to have a song by the choir. Amen.
be like Sunday. Every day. A be like Sunday. Every day. A be like Sunday. Every day. A be like Sunday. Every day will be like Sunday. Every day. Be like Sunday.
Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus is excellent. He's excellent in all things. In all the earth. Let's give this choir another hand. Amen. That's all right. Amen. Bless the Lord. He is excellent. Father God, we come now. It's another Lord's Day. And you've left us here to praise your holy name. So we come. Come with thanksgiving for all of your blessings. Oh, my God. If I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank you enough for what you've already done. If you never do anything else, you've done enough. And I bless your holy name. Thank you for these, your servants this morning, God, who gathered here and around their social media, wherever they may be, God, would watch over them, take care of them. Open their minds, their hearts, and their ears now, God, that they might hear what you're saying to the church. Bless your word as it goes forth this morning, Lord. Let it cut sin on both sides. Mm. Give us a clean heart. Purge us with your word. Speak to me and through me now you open the minds, hearts, and ears of this congregation, God, that they might hear what you're saying. I pray that you'll use me to your glory. Preach now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. Amen. Thank God for another beautiful day. I think this is most of our favorite time of year, isn't it? Nice, cool at night. You can sleep pretty good. And in the daytime, it warms up. Yeah, put on something comfortable and get out there. And you don't have to wear the air anymore. Amen. Yeah, those of us who live in the South understand that. We have that air that you wear in July and August and early September. But it's October now. October. Good Lord gives everybody a little break from something every once in a while. Amen. <laughs> he treats us just right and keeps us humble. And that's a good thing. Thank you to Reverend Bentley for taking care of our pulpit duties, to this, this singing choir back here behind us who've already set the tone for our <laughs> service this morning. Thank you. Amen. Acknowledge our officers led us in devotion this morning and to all of our technicians wherever you are scattered around the church we thank God for all of you for us it's those that get it out into the community through social media thank our music department the Nate and Sister Velma for, for making some good music and keeping a good stout beat amen and we thank God for this privilege to be used by him today to bring a word from heaven. I won't trouble you very long. Hopefully, if, if uh, you pray with me and pray for me, it won't take too long. <laughs> I, I know that sometimes I say that and I'm up here for, I don't know, for a good, good little while. But uh, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him use me. Y'all know I'm gonna do that. Come with me over to the book of St. John, chapter 15. St. John 15. I'm going to read beginning at verse 12. St. John 15 and 12. Amen. That's the gospel of St. John. Verse 12 says, This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, 
than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends. You do not, if you do whatever I command you, you are my friends. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Amen. You may be seated. May the Lord's words resonate in your hearts and souls and that you'll draw strength from them in the days to come. I'm going to stick a pen in one verse, verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I loved you. From that, we're going to speak from the subject today, called to a greater love. Amen. Call to a greater love. I know I gave y'all hell last week. <laughs> Amen. That's just about the way I put it. My subject was hell. <laughs> and you don't want to go there. <laughs> Amen. Today we're going to reverse this thing. We're going to talk about call to a greater love. Love. Love is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Now, hell is on fire, but love embraces. It, 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 there's nothing else on the planet like it. It's God. That's what love is. Love is, is God. You know, there's a story that's told of, of a little boy who wanted to grow he was a little fella, and he didn't seem to be growing fast enough. He, he, he wanted to grow. And he wanted, it, he wanted to grow so bad that he made his own measuring stick. And every morning he'd get up, and he would measure himself. And he'd say, I'm getting bigger, I'm getting taller. And it was his ritual. And one morning his dad came through and saw him out there going through that with his measuring stick. And, 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 and his dad said, son, what you doing? He said, Dad, I'm watching myself grow. His dad looked at his measuring stick, and, and he went back in a different room. Then he came back in a little while with the yard stick. He said, son, stand up. Stand up straight. Let's see. And to the little boy's dismay, he had not grown one inch from the last year when he went to get his doctor's uh, physical. He was still the same height. And his problem was, because he thought he was growing, that he was measuring himself with his own measuring stick. Isn't that ironic? Isn't that just like the church? I know I need to pull you back from that little boy. I had you kind of mesmerized. But Christians suffer with the same problem. We measure our sense of Christianity with our own measuring stick. You know, we poke our chest out and we pat ourselves on the back and think to ourselves, what great Christian I am. I'm going to go down here and get me a fifth of this cognac and ease on back to the house and I'm going to sit on the back porch, smoke a cigar. I'm a great Christian. That is what Christians do, right? Don't y'all get quiet on me in here. <laughs> Okay, okay. We measure ourselves with our own measuring stick. But when God looks upon you, all he sees is some filthy rags. You 
looked at you as, as one vexed out person. Totally vanity. That's how the Lord sells when we go through our thing. Well, we this this text this morning kind of challenges us to respond to the commands of Jesus Christ and to exhibit a greater love. Unfortunately, we have indelibly etched into our beings three problems. We exhibit, first of all, a lesser love. That's what we'll call the first one today, a lesser love. Secondly, uh, 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 some of us have a little love. And then there are others of us who are like the church of Ephesus. We are loveless. No love. Now I'm going to talk about these just for a minute or two and then I'm going to sit down. A lesser love is when you say that you love God. But you can't stand your neighbor. A lesser love is when you say, because that's all you're doing, that's your lip service to God. When you say that you love God, but you can't speak to the person that's sitting beside you. You love God. But you walk in the church and you don't want to speak to nobody, but you decide to speak to your lesser evil on that side and keep walking like you don't see nobody else. A lesser love. A lesser love, lesser love. The scripture says that there was a certain rich ruler who came to Jesus and asked him, Master, what shall I do? to inherit eternal life. And Jesus said to him, he said, he said, well, you know the commandments. And I would imagine the young rich ruler started naming them all. Thou shalt love thy God and so on and so forth. And Jesus said, okay, so you know your commandments. He said, yes, and I've kept them. From my youth up, I've kept the commandments. Jesus then said to this young man, he said, well, you like one thing. Go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor. Come back and follow me and you'll have riches in heaven. Then the scripture gets kind of funny. It says that the man went away very sorrowfully. For he was very rich. Now isn't that something? He went away sorrowfully because he was very rich. What is it? How can I inherit eternal life? Keep the commandments but I can't get rid of my money. I can't give it up. That's, that's my money. Very rich. So I'd rather go to hell than to turn over my earthly possessions and have riches in heaven. Jesus said this right down that same scripture. He said it it, it, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. 
so in love with money that they've turned money into God. Let me tell you, there's a difference. Money is not your God. Money can't be your God because money can't give you back your health when you get sick. Money can't raise one of your children if they die. Money. Can't buy joy. Can't do it. Might give you a little happiness, but happiness flees in a little while. Joy is something that the world can't give. And money certainly can't. And the world and money can't take it away from you. That's a lesser love. Now, a little love, secondly, is when you love your family, but you can't stand your foes. <laughs> you know, you, you, you love your family. Jesus said, uh, to those who'd hear, he said, love your enemies and do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. And if someone strikes you on one cheek, then turn the other. He goes on. He says, for if you Love those who love you. He raises a question in the scripture. He said, what kind of love is that? If you love those who love you, what kind of love is that? Because sinners do that. He says, if you do good to them who only do good to you, then what kind of goodness is that? That's the same thing that sinners do. However, he says, love your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing in return and your reward shall be great and you shall be called children of God. It's found in Luke 6 in case somebody want to pull that up. Everybody can love their family. I think. <laughs> I'll get back to that in just a minute. Thirdly, no love, no love, love less, is when you only love yourself. <laughs> That, that, that's what that's what love less means. You're in love with you. And Jesus gives us another parable. He warns against covetousness. For life is more than self gratification by collecting things that please you. Life is more than that. More than things. He mentions a certain rich man who had plenty. And one day he woke up and his crops were bundled. His barns were already full. And though he lived in a, in a city that had a lot of hungry folk, needy folk, he decided that what I'll do is I'll just tear down these barns that don't hold everything that I got. And I'm going to build me some bigger barns. And then I can eat, drink, and be merry. Have all my stuff in my barns, my new barns. But then Jesus said something happened that brought in a new reality. He said... God spoke to him and said, thou fool. 
this night. In other words, you won't make it today. This night, your soul shall be required of you. And then Jesus raises the question, then whose will this stuff be? Isn't that a real question for you? If you die today, with all of the love that you have for the stuff that you got in your home, including the home, that you don't want nobody to have, something to think about, isn't it? Whose will it be? Let me tell you. It will fall into the hands of some food who will sell it or give it away or put it in the trash before you get cold. And that little bank account that you got with that million dollars in it that you're saving up for something most of you can't remember for what, but what's up? Let me tell you, I told you last week that money burns in hell like everything else. And if you think that this is hell on earth, then it's going to burn right here too because whoever has it falls into doesn't have the same worship spirit for it as you do. And they will throw it away before you get cold. And if you don't have a will, let me put this in, the lawyer's going to spend about three quarters of it. <laughs> and they won't even pay a tithe. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, this is A greater love is when you're willing to forego all sense of self and sacrifice your ego for another human being that you may not even know. Greater love. When you're willing to give up your sense of self, your sense of security, your sense of self-sufficiency and engage in the life of somebody who is less fortunate than you are, then you have moved to a greater love. This is the polarity upon which we all live. Either we are selfish or we are self-sacrificing. One or the other. Selfish or self-sacrificing. When I, when, I, when, I, when I thought about this, I, I, I thought about the story of Hosea in the Old Testament. Ho Hosea was basically asked by God to go out and marry a prostitute. Everybody knows what a prostitute is, right? There's something in my mind that says that young folks don't know what prostitutes are because they ain't never heard that word. So I'm going to break it down to the least common denominator. A how. <laughs> Everybody know what that is. Jose. Prophet, minor prophet, but a major message. Hosea was asked by God to marry a prostitute. Now what's interesting about Hosea is that his wife decided she didn't want to be nothing but a prostitute. So she went back out to the red light district, and got herself pregnant and came home, had a baby, living with Hosea. Went back out again after he got that one weaned and and, and, and she did the same thing a second time, had another baby, brought it back home, left it with Hosea. 
And Hosea, well, can you imagine a married man and his wife going through these situations? This man loved this woman. He loved her. But three times she did it. Three children. I don't know very many men who would accept his wife back from all of her lovers in the red light district. But Hosea did it. And after the third time, she went back. I guess she couldn't get pregnant that time, so they, they talked about and scandalized her, and, and ultimately she fell on hard times, and they put her on the auction block. And Hosea heard about it, and again his heart melted, and he went back, and he bought her, bought his wife, and took her back home. Now you talk about a greater love. That's a greater love. But, but even in that love, Hosea just showed us something that, that, that you got to submerge your spiritual sense into and understand that it's the same love. God was showing us through Hosea that it doesn't matter what your sin is. How great your sin has been. He'll take you back. He loves us so much. So much greater than this world could ever love you. Jose showed us the love that God has for his people. He says, if you repent, I will forgive you. Turn from your wicked ways. So when I say self-sacrifice, and I don't mean self disappearing you know sometimes we just leave get away from it don't want to be no part of it around certain folk self sacrificing where you sacrifice Yourself to the sense that you submerge your sense of who you are and who you are to be in relationship with others because they too are children of God. I don't want to associate with them. Those are nobodies. They don't drive my kind of car. They don't wear my kind of clothes. They don't have my kind of. They're poor people. I don't deal with people in the project. All they want is some, some, some money so they can buy a sandwich, so they say, but I know that they just buying something else. I don't deal with them because I'm rich. I don't have to deal with anybody. Martin Luther King Jr. was not a garbage man, but he entered into the world of garbage men to connect his isness with their oughtness. Let me show you what I mean. The Memphis workers had lost their sense of pride. They had nothing until King came and joined them in their march. And they carried a sign that said, I am a man. I don't care how poor I am, I'm still a man. I don't care how rich you are. I'm just as much a man as you are. 
My blood is red. My passion is true. I am a man. King understood the humanity of inextricability of, 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 of how all of this stuff tied itself together in the grand mosaic of the creator. When God painted this world, he painted it with a little bit of everything. It takes all of us to make the world go around. So there can be no little U's and big eyes. It's just us. We are who we are. We are children of God. Every last one of us. And when you walk by me, you better speak. Because I don't care how you feel about me. I love you anyway. This love is not contingent upon how you feel. It's contingent on how I feel because God has been good to me. You're not going to move this smile from my face. I don't care how you treat me. I'm going to still smile. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to do everything that a brother would do for another brother because that's who I am. When God made me, he put joy on the inside of me. I ain't giving that up for nothing. I know, you know that there are going to be people who hate on you for just being you. Love yourself, but love God beyond everything, including yourself. We're the same. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus steps into humanity and into human history, and he doesn't suggest, he doesn't recommend, he doesn't plead with us. In our text, he commands he commands, this is my command, that you love one another. Love one another. He says, as I have loved you, greater love has no man than this, that, he, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus knew that we get caught up on the words, on the word friends. That we would liken the word friend to those who have similar interests, common bloodlines, or those who walk in the same social circles. So Jesus redefines friend. He defines it as those who will do his commands. My friends, I've learned that blood is thicker than water, but the Spirit of God is thicker than blood. And you'll find that in life, persons may be kin. But they still may not be your kind. We've all got some folk in our family lines that we don't care that much for. We do. But he's still your blood. He's still your king. And the Spirit of God has a way of knitting relationships together around a common purpose for doing his will. So when, it doesn't make any difference about who it is. Sister Betty can be your aunt. Sister Carrie can be your aunt. I was... I was away for a few days last week and I found myself having to stay in some strange places. So I, the first hotel that I lived in, the, the lady who ran the desk called me Papa. I 
her papa. I was offended initially because I had on my jogging suit, <laughs> my cap on, you know. She looked through all that and saw Papa. And that's what she called me. And, and I learned to live with it pretty quickly. <laughs> had a flat tire. Had to go down to the tire place, get my tire fixed. And the fellow who was changing my tire called me Unc. Unc. <laughs> um. You by the shop. Oh, where you been? I said, where you from? I'm from North Carolina. It didn't make any difference. She saw me as Papa. He saw me as his uncle. That's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing when people see you as my brother or my sister. Some of us call each other cousin. Don't have any clue about who your mama and daddy is. It doesn't matter. We have kindred spirits. I kind of like that papa thing. <laughs> if we can ever learn that Jesus commands us to a greater love, Christians then can truly become the example that Christ expects us to be. I'm done. Why y'all can get a song ready? That's when it's all, when it comes 360 with you. Because in John 3 and 16, John quotes Jesus as having said, For God so loved the world. And I know that you know this verse. That he gave his only begotten son whosoever that means me <laughs> that means you that means our other cousins and our nephews and our nieces and our children can come whosoever the doors of the church are open you can be a child of God today won't you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If your heart is full of love and you don't belong to the church, you need to turn it over. God 
God is faithful to perform. To perform. Oh, yes, he can. Perform his plan. Amen, 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 amen. God is faithful. Amen. Amen. If, if we were just a fraction being as faithful as God is, I think we could turn this world around. And right now, we're in a pretty bad place, particularly in these United States of America. It's a wonderful country. But I'm mighty afraid that we have just about turned away from God. And then there are a whole lot of us who never really knew God. I, I, I'm, I'm not a radical when it comes to the word of God. Um, and sometimes I, I, I start wondering about people who are when you are willing to go and kill somebody because you don't think that they need to be a Christian. Your Christianity is better than my Christianity. And I, I can't live with you on the planet because we got some differences. I think God loves us just as we are, particularly when we try and do our best toward keeping his commandments and doing his will, keeping his commandment. Love ye one another. That's the commandment for the day. Love one another the way that I have loved you. That's what he said. And even those who would spill my blood because of my faith, God is still willing to forgive them. And if God is willing to forgive them, then I'm going to hope that they wouldn't do that, but going on to heaven if that happens. I love the Lord and I'm going to live like every day is my last day. And I'd expect that if you love God the way that you say you do, you might want to live the same way. Amen. I know, I know, I know I've got a little long. But, uh, praise the Lord. Greater love is your calling. Today is communion day, and wherever you are, I pray that you have your wine and your bread so that you too can be a part of our communion service today. On that evening when the disciples had gathered themselves together in the upper room and our Lord was with them, he took bread and he broke it. He said, well, this is my body that shall be given for you. Take and eat ye all of it. And then he poured a cup. He said, this is my blood, the blood of the New Testament, the blood that shall be shed for the remission of your sins. Drink ye all of it, for as often as you partake of my body and blood, you'll show forth my suffering and my death until I return unto you. And then he said, don't do it if your heart isn't right. You need a clean heart. You need a forgiving heart. A heart willing to turn on everything except God because he's our Savior. He's the only one who can get us into the kingdom of heaven. Forget about all that stuff that would separate you from his love. Let that go. Jesus was there in the flesh. He blessed that bread and wine and he's here in the spirit. 
And I'm going to ask him today to bless us and, and make us worthy. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you'll make us worthy vessels to partake of your body and your blood. Forgive us for all of our sins and our trespasses, our misdeeds. Forgive us. Make us worthy to eat of your body and drink of your blood. And I pray that you'll change these elements, this bread and this wine, from a physical state into a spiritual state, God, that it will represent you and bring us closer to you. For our Lord said, do this in remembrance of me. And I thank you for it. And pray your blessings upon us and upon this sacrifice. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I'm going to. Ask our ushers. Oh no, my deacons. I'm sorry. They'll come now and distribute our bread and wine. Everyone 
been served. Did we miss anybody? Amen. Lord says, do this in remembrance of me. After they had supped, they sang a hymn and they went out. sang a hymn and they went out to a mountain we each still have our mountains some a little bigger than others some a little further around some a little taller but we've got them and they are in the way but God has promised that he will move your mountain or drill a hole through it so you can walk to the other side he'll get you to the other side of it if you hold to his unchanging hand. I bless you. I love you. I thank God for each and every one of you. Father God, now I thank you for all that we've done here today and for all that we shall do when we leave this place pray that you will watch over us and take care of us, God. Order our steps and help us to move our feet so that we can be used to your glory. Bless us and keep us there is my prayer as we are dismissed in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You may go in peace.